What is going on guys, it is your boy Gary G Gaming here, coming at you live, completely unscripted, just off the top of my head, and honestly, I was having some thoughts the other day about just how far the game has come. Like, honestly, War Thunder has progressed through so many stages of evolution, particularly among a game. I've never seen this in a single game, ever, honestly. Like, think about it. You know, this was based around a World War II flight simulator, that sort of erred into the Korean War. And what do we have now? You know, the M1 Abrams, the Challenger, a prototype of Leopard, the T-64B. You know, vehicles like that. And this next part will be a bit of guided rambling, but I'll try to keep it as concise as possible. But honestly, this game started out as a flight simulator for World War II combat aircraft, branching out into jets. Who remembers War Thunder pre-ground forces? Because I certainly wasn't playing it back then. But I'm just wondering if any one of you, you know, pretty much all of you are subscribed because of Warfighter content, so. But, like, before Ground Forces, and then when Ground Forces was introduced, it was like a game changer, because the only other game at the time out with tanks that wasn't an armoured simulator was World of Tanks. And, yeah, when Warfighter Ground Forces first came in, it was clunky. It was so unrefined tanks didn't feel like tanks you know i played arcade back then especially and it was just so fast zippy it felt more realistic than world of tanks for sure but world of tanks had this polish about it you know it, it had a grounding somewhat it, even if it wasn't realistic the gameplay was grounded you know war thunder ground forces were more realistic but just the things you did in the vehicles were just totally wacky they were just completely off i mean now look at the game like you know, ground forces play realistic pretty much exclusively, and, you know, it, it feels genuinely like you're driving a tank. They've managed to capture that essence extremely well. Obviously, there's always going to be gamey elements, because I'm, real life is not fun. Like, how many of you have had to change a track in, you know, the rain and the mud? How many of you have had to load 105 millimeter shells from the ground out of a supply truck into the actual tank sitting there waiting for a tank to be refueled uh, army hurry up and wait you know you don't have to do any of these things where you're sitting there in an armored column for about you know two hours wondering what the hell are you going to be doing out on the range next you know things like that is what this game it removes that and just brings in the fun elements you know of tank and vehicle combat However, it was mainly centred around World War II. We all remember this. The cutoff date for jets still is 1953. And for ground forces, no tank... Back in the day, no ground forces tank exceeded 1950s, you know. It was T-54s. Um, the British didn't even have their ground forces at the time. It was T-54s. You had the Panther II and, you know... The, the mouse, the King Tiger 105, the Gag Tiger, they'd all go head to head. America didn't really have that many vehicles. Like, sure, they had the, the Patton. That was about it, just the M48. So, you know, you had these tiny 90mm gun, 88mm gun vehicles going up against T-54s. That was the meta back in the day. That was the pretty much the way the game played out. And then, you know, I remember when the Leopard 1 was first introduced, and everyone thought, oh, how could such a clunky little unarmored vehicle go in War Thunder. Well, this thing dominated the game. This was the best tank in the game for quite some time. Because all the all the other teams had were, were the same old crappy tanks they usually had. You know, the Russians still had their T-54s. This thing completely dominates a T-54 because it negates all advantages the T-54 has. The only equalizer is that a rank 3 can kill a Leopard 1 from the front. That's the equalizer. It came down to player skill. But these things had an inherent advantage, in my opinion. So, you know, and some people might say, you know, the changes to War Thunder sort of began with the introduction of the Leopard, you know, that sort of evolution moving into the 1960s, you know, the L7 105mm gun armed tanks. When the British got their ground forces, we got the Centurions, vehicles like that, you know, the proper original British tanks with the L7 105mm guns, you know, the a myriad of different things. Eventually the British got their Chieftains, the Americans got their L7 armed Pattons, the M60, M60A1, 
different vehicles like that. One of the major changes that I found in the game was the introduction of ATGMs. Now, people probably don't remember this, but before ATGMs, one of the big focuses placed on the game was actually rockets. Vehicles like the, um, what's that thing, the something 42, like the Nurburgring 42 or something. The Calliope, the Pershing with the rockets on the side, the RBT-5, you know, the Cromwell with the RP-3s. Vehicles like that were being tested, and it was like a foundation to add the ATGMs into the game. Now, when ATGMs were added, everyone thought they were cancer. You know, they actually added the IT-1 uh, before the T-62 proper. So, you had the T-62-based hull, but you, you know, you didn't actually have the actual T-62 in the game yet. Things like that, you know, rub people the wrong way, and, you know... But the battlefield became hyper-lethal, because there was this playstyle of everything could kill everyone, whether it be at close range, long range, whatever. T-62 was introduced, first smoothbore gun, firing APFSDS. That changed the game again, because, you know, you had these, um, uh, some people call them lawn darts, some people call them super darts. Essentially, long rod APFSDS was just introduced, and all of a sudden this thing can just pen anything from any angle. Now, to me, what laid the groundwork for what we have now, the Abrams and all this other stuff, happened in April last year when they had the April Fool's Rank 9 special event where T-90As went up against Leopard 2A5s. These vehicles had smoke grenade launchers before smoke was introduced, they had composite armour before composite armour was introduced, uh, the T-90 could fire ATGMs out of its main gun the same way the T-64B can today. Fun fact actually, T-64B and the T-90 have essentially the same gun, it's the same model of gun, the 2A46, you know, smoothbore 125mm gun, don't want to ramble too much, but you know what I'm saying, and it's that kind of, it was the groundwork, because, you know, people realised from that April Fool's event, you know what, we wouldn't actually mind modern vehicles, if you announced this before that, that event, people would be up in arms, they'd be saying, oh, our precious Tiger Tank Simulator, we, we can't do that, and, you know, and that's why we have the Abrams and all these modern tanks, mainly from, you know, the previous Rank 6 being introduced. And now that we have all these vehicles, one can only wonder where we're going to go next. And that's probably going to be subject of another video. But until then, I just wanted to take the time to sort of remember and think on the game that it used to be, that clunky flight simulator that decided to add tanks, you know, the lovable times when we'd have Spitfires fighting BF-109 E3s. Things like that, I just want us to all remember before we move on into the sort of new era, you know, the advancing storm, as to speak, you know. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make this video as a sort of introspective. This would probably get no views whatsoever, but I don't care because it's my content and my channel and... If you've got any opinions about it, just leave them in the comments section down below. It is Bonnie. Ah, it has been your boy Garage Gaming here, and I hope to catch you guys next time. See ya.